too much. Oh. I, I need you guys to pay attention, please. What we're going to add today is the sedimentary. Okay? We talked last time about igneous. This is about sedimentary. So, based off your reading, let's see if we can fill this in. If we have any type of a rock, and it becomes this, and it turns into this. Well, this is the final. Remember that the circles is like the final goal. So we're talking about sedimentary rock. So the circle is going to be the sedimentary. I'll change my color here to make it easier. I already asked. Don't worry. Okay, so here we have sedimentary rock down here. We, okay, so we have igneous, we have sedimentary rock. In order for sedimentary rock to turn into lava or magma, what does it have to do? You guys get it? It melts. You're starting to see how this kind of all ties back together? Any rock, any rock can melt, turn into lava or magma, crystallize, and become igneous rock. Any rock can go through what process? What was the answer to question number one on the quiz? Yeah, weathering and erosion. Any rock can go through the process of weathering and erosion to be turned into sediment. You guys remember the rock cycle game? Yeah, Okay, here we have sediments, sedimentary, and then we have this process of weathering and erosion. That's compaction. No. Weathering and erosion. This pen is terrible. Yeah, I know. I've got a new one. Okay. Now, weathering and erosion. Now, this arrow here is pointing back to sediments. That means the sedimentary rock is undergoing weathering and erosion. I didn't feel the need for even more spaces to write stuff. But what is this arrow going from sediments to sedimentary? What was that process called? I said it was rockification. Does anyone remember that word? Lithification. Lithification? Right, this pen's terrible. Mm -hmm. Lith. Oh, goodness. Yeah. Lithification? Yeah. There we go. Lithification comes from the Greek word lithos. You don't have to know that, but I think it's really helpful to know that lithos equals rock. So, to rockify something. That is Greek letter. Okay. <laughs> well, that's why, you know, this is the lambda, Yoda, and yeah, no, uh, the honor causes it around. Right? Yeah, I, I spent about a year, easily three years studying engineering. Can you look at that meter? Okay. So, lithification. Under lithification, I want you to write some processes. You have compaction. Compression. Compaction is the one that deals with compression. It's being compacted like a trash compactor. Okay. There's cementation. Okay. Cementation has the word in it cement. Who's heard of cement? Okay. You know, roads all over Pennsylvania are made of cement to our horror and detriment. Okay. So, cement. Right? Sidewalks are made of this, driveways are made of this stuff. It's, you take that carbonate rock, that limestone, break it down to get the powder, mix it with water and rocks. It hardens, it hardens, it cements into a whatever shape you want. Okay? This happens in nature, not human nature. This happens in nature all the time. It's called cementation. It's when rocks get compressed down into a layer. Some, some calcite gets added to that, it cements it all together, you have a new rock. There's one more. I'm just going to say chemical. Chemical, well, we're just going to go with chemical. <coughs> chemical rocks are those evaporate rocks like halite or limestones. We've talked about those. Okay. 
This is the rock cycle. So we have sedimentary rocks here. We have, sorry, sedimentary rocks here, igneous rocks here. And everything just starts kind of, as long as you know how the liberal processes work, you can put it together. So, it helps my turn off. All sedimentary rocks can be melted into lava or magma, and then they can crystallize into igneous rock. You need to know that lava and magma always go to igneous rock. But all rocks, sedimentary and igneous, can be weathered and eroded into little bitty pieces. Those pieces can be moved, transported, laid down somewhere else, compacted, lithified into something other than sediments, then you get sedimentary rock. So here we have two steps of the rock cycle. We're going to talk all about sedimentary rock today. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, do you guys have any questions before I erase this? No. Okay, do you guys all have this down? Remember that one sheet of paper I asked you to be right in the rock cycle? We're going to build it one step at a time? Okay. Here we go. I'm going to go ahead and turn the page so we can get started. Formation of sedimentary rocks. There's so much that gets into this. I mean, if you ever take a geology class, this is where a lot of the fun geology is. Is oh my gosh, fun? Yes. Yeah. You look at a rock. Oh, this is a sandstone. I wonder what was life like when this sandstone was forming. You know, then you, you, you're like, mm, and then your thought bubble comes out, and then your video plays, and you show. Okay, you see a beach full of sand. And over time, that sand gets harder and harder and harder through compaction. And then the sand turns into a rock. Okay, that would be the lithification of sandstone. Gentlemen, get your heads up. Julius, Johnny, take your notes up, man. Come on, write something down. Don't have to stay away. Okay. Here's the, here's the idea. Where do the pieces of the rocks come from? Okay, where does the sand originally come from? Okay, what kind of rocks and where are they? Okay, well, not necessarily sedimentary rocks. Okay, it could be any rocks. It could be sedimentary rocks. It could be igneous. It could be metamorphic. All sedimentary rocks start out as a rock that first get weathered and eroded. Weathered. Weathered is the process of breaking down rocks. But where are those rocks originally found? Mountains. Where are the mountains here? Shenandoah. Okay. So the closest mountain range you're getting toward the Shenandoah Mountains. Okay. All the sediment, all those pieces of rocks that get broken down in the Shenandoah Mountains get transported toward us. How do they get transported toward us? What carries all that stuff our direction? Erosion. Erosion is often, often, often water-based. So what do we have that flows from the mountains to us? Rivers. Okay. Yeah. Rivers transport all these sediments, typically, there's many other ways, but rivers are the big mover of sediments from the mountains to us. Okay? Um, I'm not moving on yet. Okay, so these weathered rock pieces, sediment, do you guys get, I'm not trying to say this like a thousand times, weathered rock pieces are sediment, right? You can't play the sediment car down on a sedimentary rock pile in your card game, right? Sediment is eroded, transported somewhere else. All right, so that's your basic concept here. So we're talking about summarizing, summarizing. What did I say? I said that all pieces of rocks are broken off other rocks, and that rock is transported. That's one piece. Okay. Those sediments usually come from mountains. Second piece. Third piece. The further away the sediment is from the mountains, the more sorted the sediment becomes. We're going to talk about sorting in just a second. OK, 
Okay, do you guys have the formation of the Indian Rocks? You don't look nearly as excited as I am today. What's the last one? <laughs> Okay. Uh, while you guys are writing this down, I'm going to grab my rock samples. Okay. Do you guys have this written down? Can I move on? Oh, goodness. Notes, notes, notes. Once you get through this, we'll get a lot easier. Lithification. Plastic. Oh, I'm putting these headers on my notes. This might help you to organize your notes a little bit. So when you go back, like, oh, Sukor was talking about the lithification of plastic rocks. Okay, plastic rocks, pop quiz. What are they made of? Other rocks. Other rocks. Plastic rocks are made of other rocks. Um, so we have this sediment, it's broken down typically to mountain, it's moved, weathered and eroded, eroded, moved, it's deposited. What does deposit mean? Okay, to put money in the bank. So if, if you work for me as a lifeguard and then I give you your paycheck, okay, that'd be like the eroding of my money. Now it's at you, you take that money and transport it somewhere to your bank and deposit it, now it's staying put at the bank, right? Okay, so sediment is the same way. It's eroded, moved, and deposited somewhere else. So all that pieces of rock gets put somewhere else. So the sand at the beach didn't start at the beach, it started up in the Shenandoah Mountains, up in the Appalachian Mountains. It was deposited at the beach. So the whole sand it was a bigger piece of a rock, and that rock, like, let's say I take a mountain, and I'm Thor Almighty, and I hit it with a hammer, and it breaks into a giant chunk. This giant chunk is now washing down the river because it's a flood. As it goes downstream, it bangs into other rocks, and it bangs into other rocks, and that, that big piece gets smaller, smaller, and smaller, and now you have all these different pieces. And the further I go downstream, the bigger pieces stay behind, and the smaller pieces keep going. And as I keep going downstream, I get these smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller pieces until by the time I get to the beach, the only thing I have left is sand. So the whole ocean is made off mountains? <clears throat> no, I'm, I'm not talking about oceans. I'm just talking about <coughs> continents and beaches. Okay, so going from the mountains to the ocean, to the ocean, but not actually the bottom of the ocean. Okay, here we go. Okay, this sediment is put down somewhere. So we've been talking about a beach. We'll keep that going. It's lithified. Lithified. If you still don't know what this means, lithified means turned into a rock. So if you're having trouble with this vocab, Danny, you should write that lithified means turned into rock. Where's your notes? Where's your notes at? All right. What does it mean to be lithified? It's put under pressure and it compacts. Whoa, wait a second. What is this? Cementation or compaction? Compaction. Pressure and then it compacts. It's compaction. I think I heard somebody say it, but I heard someone say the wrong one too. Pressure and then it compacts. Or sometimes a cementing agent like calcite or something similar seeps into that sediment, gets all through the sediment. Let's say you have water, it floods, or this sand is now underground a little bit, and the water that seeps down into the sand from up above has a lot of calcite in it, and that calcite just drenches the sand, and as that water dries up, the calcite's left behind, like the salt is left, remember the pan of salt when you evaporate your salt water and your salt's left behind? Same concept, the calcite's left behind, but now the calcite holds all the sand together and it gets cemented. It acts like glue. That's a, that's a good analogy. Okay. It can either be compacted or cemented or compacted then cemented. Okay. 
In both cases, the sediments harden into layers of rock. Sediments harden into layers of rock. Do you remember in the quiz I said there, there was one option called strata? You guys remember strata? Layers of rock equals strata. I'll let you write that down in your notes as I will write it down for you. Layers of rock equal S-T-R-A-T-A, -A, strata. Okay, and down here I have at the bottom, so officially tell you that lithos equals rock in Greek, and lithification means to turn into a rock. Isn't that amazing? It's fantastic. Wait, what were you saying? So, what was I saying? You're saying no, you didn't know. All right, lithification. All right, you guys get lithification of plastic rocks. You can compact them, or you can cement them. You can compact them, or you can cement them, or you can pack them, then cement them. You can have, uh, both of those will work. Yes? So, like, is, is, can sand be cemented together? Yes. Sand can be cemented together. What would that mean? Sandstone. Uh, calcite, typically. So, here is a piece of sandstone. This is sandstone, if you kind of feel it, you'll feel the sand grains. Okay, that's sandstone. Those are pieces of sand that were at one point all held together. Yeah, compaction sanitation. Like all that sand was loose, now it's been pressurized, and then water that calcite gets down in there. Okay. Yeah, it gets buried under the earth. More and more sand builds up, it gets deeper and deeper. How does it come out of the earth? That's, that's for later. It's never here. Uh, different geologic processes of mountain building, uh, stuff, weathering and erosion, things like that. Okay, do you guys have this? Okay, now I said there's... Scott, Scott, head up, put back. There's two different kinds of rock, okay? There's plastic sedimentary rock, and there's chemical sedimentary rock. Okay, two different kinds, and on the test, you will have to answer how do sedimentary rocks form plastically and chemically. Okay, so you have to know this. Once again, they're deposited and lithified. Well, it's a little bit different when you have chemical rocks. This is a process, we've talked about this. This is not new. We talked, the, the big example I used was I like pasta, I like to cook. Last night I made more pasta for dinner. Okay, yeah, it was rigatoni with some like turkey sausage and roasted red pepper sauce. It was pretty gosh darn good. Um, but in the pan, there was... Guys, we need to move on. If you want to know what I'm doing for Thanksgiving, then you can ask me after class. Water... Stop. Stop. Quiet. Water often is full of minerals. So if you get this water that's jammed full of minerals, usually some form of calcite, okay, I'm even going to write that up here so you know that. It's usually calcite. It's not always. You can have rock salt, so it could be halite. If you have water that's full of minerals, typically like calcite, and that water starts to evaporate, the more the water evaporates, the stronger the concentration. Gentlemen, stop talking. Stop. The more the water evaporates, the heavier the concentration of that mineral in the water. Or the mineral in solution. What did you say, Matt? Hey, guys. That table. The more the water evaporates, the heavier the solution. And eventually, there will be so much mineral in solution that it cannot stay in solution, and it falls out. And you have these, this calcite will come out of solution, or it stops being 
salt water and you start seeing salt pile up on the bottom of your pan. The minerals drop out of the water, they collect on the bottom of the water. As they collect, it keeps collecting over time, you get these nice big thick layers of calcite. Well, as that happens, the pressure of the water will compact it and it will cement together and you get you get limestone. Where does this happen? This happens in warm, shallow seas. Because in order for the water to do this, it has to be warm enough to evaporate. Where is the water always really warm and always evaporating all the time? Places like the Bahamas, okay, or South Pacific, where it's very, very warm all the time, those clear waters. This is where we get limestone, limestone formation. Gentlemen, get control. Okay. Now, remember that coquina that I showed you on the picture? It's that rock that I said was biochemical? It is a rock made of the bodies or the shells of sea creatures like snails, clams, lobsters, all those things. Lobsters. Okay, anything that has a calcite shell, like in my fish tank at home that actually stays alive, I've got three clams and one snail. So the shells of the clam and the snail. Calm down, gentlemen. <laughs> those shells, when those creatures die at sea, well, they don't stay floating or wherever the, that creature was when, the, when it dies. There's no burial rites. They wash down, get to the bottom layer, and they start to pile up. And when that happens, you can get the coquinas. Rock with shells in it? Um, I'll try to get a sample of it and show you. I just have some tests. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Okay, Julius. Oh, oh. I would wait to feel something like that. The, the clams in the tank are filter feeders. So they suck water in and they blow water out. And as any nutrients that are in the water, residual nutrients, they filter through that and absorb the nutrients. They help keep the tank clean and they're really cool. Because they have, they have a foot, so like their shell, oh, literally their shell opens and they stick like it looks like their tongue out. They dig a hole and bury themselves in the sand at the bottom. So you just have to leave them in plenty of water. Oh, well, as, long, as long as I feed my other fish, there's nutrients in the water. Okay. So where's your fish? No, you can't eat Hey, did that? Hey, what are we giving the fish? Never. All right. What? Why is it? How big is fish? You guys ready? Okay. Picture time. Okay. Picture time. Here we go. I want to show you some pictures of plastic rocks. I'm gonna pass out samples as I do this, so you can actually touch some. Okay. The first rock. <laughs> Oi! Oi! Oi, mate. What is that? Stop. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, get control. Stop talking. Brendan, stop. Julius. Okay. Conglomerate rocks. Now, I would, if I were you, in my notes, Write down descriptions of rocks because if I showed them to you now, remember that lab practical we had last time? I am planning a much more intense lab practical. So any pictures you see now or samples you touch, write down a good description, take a picture of it with your phone, do something so that you remember these rocks. Because you will see them again. Conglomerate rocks are made of rounded pebble sand and clay okay so here's an example of a very small chunk of a conglomerate rock go ahead and pass this table to table so if I say hey which rock is made of mixed sediments so big size sediments small size sediments and it has rounded pebbles which one would that be Conglomerate. Conglomerate. Uh, not that I can get you right now. Sorry. 
Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, so the it's like the siltstone, sandstone, it's all mixed together. All different sizes of pebbles, rocks. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> mixed sediment sizes, okay. That's these conglomerates where you have bigger pebbles, pieces of sand, you've got a lot of mud in the matrix. It's all mixed up, all different sizes. This is a mixed sediment rock. Then you have a sorted sediment rock like sandstone. Well, sandstone is made from sand. There's not big pebbles in there. There's not smaller pebbles in there. It's just pretty much sand. So here's the sandstone. Okay. <laughs> Okay, here's some more plastic rocks. If you know that, notice these were all the rocks that were in the quiz. Okay, this is called a breccia. Breccia, it's a, like an Italian way of saying things. Breccia. The difference here. The difference between a conglomerate and a breccia is what? Not that they're bigger, but they're angular. You see these nice sharp points? This act, we're going to talk about this later. This is a big deal. Big deal. If it's got sharp points, listen, guys, I hate talking over you. Stop it. Stop. If it's got sharp edges, it means it was deposited near the mountain. Because if it came further down the mountain, as Brandon and I were talking earlier, the further the sediment gets away from the mountain, the more rounded and broken up it gets, especially if it's in a river. So breccias were never in a river. Conglomerates are formed in rivers, or near rivers. Breccias, no river. Okay. I have a breccia. This is the breccia. So go ahead and pass that around. Okay. The last kind of rock that I'm going to uh, show you is uh, the classic rocks. Johnny, please forward. Okay. The last one I'm going to show you is the shale, the one that you guys saw the the leaf fossil on. The shale is made almost entirely of clay. 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 I said that geo that was made mostly of limestone, it fizzes because it's made of calcite. Okay, almost entirely calcite. So if you put acid on limestone, it'll fizz. Limestone looks like a lot of different things. There's lots of different samples of what limestone can look at. But you know it's limestone if you put acid on it, it fizzes. It's calcite. Yeah. Now here we have this biochemical rock. <laughs> It's in the chemical rock category, but it's clastic. So we call it biochemical. It's called coquina. 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 Coquina.
Aquina. Okay. It's made of the shells of the animals and the creatures and the snails and the glands and the lobsters. Can you find a good beach? Depending on what beach you're at. Okay. Okay, sedimentary rocks here. Alright, I'm going to give you something very important. John, Villa, Brian. The size of sediments is very important that you know what the sizes are. Okay, now I'm not asking you. I'm not going to ask you. Hey. I'm not going to ask you to memorize the different actual measurements, but you should know the order and a general idea of the measurements. You should know that you start with. Now, up here I have boulder. How big is a boulder? They're pretty darn big. And if you ever go upstream into Shenandoah, you'll see that giant floods can carry these massive boulders. Have you seen those? Like you see video footage of floods carrying houses down river. Okay, lots of water can move big rocks. Those big rocks are sediments the size of houses. Sometimes you get these giant boulders. So if I said, "What's the largest sediment size?" You should naturally say, "A boulder, a nice boulder." All right? Yeah. The Ogdenwong River? Yeah. If you go upstream. Yeah, like how there's a huge pond. Yeah. Are those naturally occurring? Yes. Yeah. It's the geeky river, right? Yeah. 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 Okay, let's put this in order from biggest to smallest. Okay, we know that the boulder is the biggest. What's next? Okay, so, okay here we have bull, uh, pebbles and silts and clay and sand. Shh, it's in lay effect. Pebble is actually number two. A pebble is bigger than sand. Okay. Then we have silk, clay, and sand. Which one of these is the next in size? Silk, clay, sand. sand. There we go. It's on the board right now. All right. Then what do we have? Then we have clay. Oh, I'm sorry. Then we have silk. Then we have clay. So boulder, pebble, sand, silk, clay. You need to write this down in your notes. You need to know this order. Okay? Boulder, pebble, sand, silk, clay. Boulder, pebble, sand, silk, clay. These are all the components of plastic, plastic sedimentary rocks. So sedimentary rocks that have lots of pebbles that are mixed are conglomerates. If they're rounded, if they're angular, they're precious. You have sandstone, siltstone, and shale. Okay, no, here's the conglomerate. Okay. That's a conglomerate and a siltstone. Okay, we're almost done. We're almost, hey, gentlemen, ladies, we're not finished until the bell rings. Stop. 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 Nadia. Okay. Sedimentary rocks have really cool features to them. Different rock layers are called strata, so you should write down, if you haven't already, that strata equals different rock layers. 
Fossils, fossils are imprinted in the sedimentary rocks. They are not in igneous, they're not in metamorphic. They're only in sedimentary rocks. That's important. I would remember that. Yeah. Ripple marks are here. Mud cracks are here. Strata is the different layers. So here's the strata. Fossils, ripple marks, and mud cracks. Those should be fairly simple to remember.